we're talking about mindfulness and um, self-reflection. And some cyber troopers came on, uh, politic-wise, uh, giving the most horrible comments online, uh, which was totally uncalled for and completely disgusting, right? Um, but because I've been through that experience, I've gone very, very down um, until, until you know, I was hospitalized once due to that cyberbullying. Uh, now I have built that resilience um, to sort of let, not let it affect me. Thankfully, I didn't hurt myself, although I almost probably did. You know, I mean, it was really hurtful. My children saw me crying. I went into an anxiety when my body was shaking. I had to take Valium actually to calm me down. it's helpful if someone is like accountable or like you know someone at least like one of your friends or like your parent or someone that you're close to um you can that like you know tell them to like hey can you can you tell me if i'm using it way too much i can tell like some people um have issues with the, in terms of like limiting themselves or self-disciplining themselves if it comes from that person then i think it's <laughs> But most of the time, uh, uh, like parents will tell their children that they're using social media too much, or uh, a spouse will tell the other spouse that they're using mm -hmm. too much. So usually, uh, it will be seen as something negative. Eh? Uh, you're telling me that I'm using too much. Uh, I'm not doing it. Yeah? Uh, denial and all. Eh? And sometimes they can become angry as well. Yeah, because you're telling them something that they don't think is happening. Do. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But if it comes from them. Uh, I think I'm using too much. Can you monitor my use? Then I think that is totally, totally fine. It's related to the um, what we call the brain reward pathway. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a pathway inside our brain yeah, that uh, controls our motivation and also pleasure. So when you do something that is pleasurable, your brain will remember. Okay, your brain will remember that doing this is pleasurable. So the brain wants to, to do it again. Yeah, when, when you're feeling very stressed out or tired eh, and you want something to boost up that um, dopamine, yeah, so mm -hmm. the brain reminds you that by going on social media, it makes you happy. So you go on it. It can, it is sort of the same thing as what's happening to people who use drugs yeah, uh, or other substance of abuse. Yeah. And if this already happened to this person, yeah, uh, like Guadina said, it can be very difficult you to point it out because they they wouldn't understand it yeah but because the brain yeah already have this circuit that's saying yeah this is how you do it yeah when you feel unhappy you go to social media you get the pleasure especially mm -hmm. you post something and then you get the likes yeah nowadays people are chasing the likes right so once you post something you want people to like your post yeah uh, people to um, maybe retweet yeah your, your tweet Sometimes yeah, it can go towards the uh, addiction part, yeah? becoming dependent on it. Yeah, it's how they self, some people self-medicate as well. You know, they get so stressed out with something, they just go online and social media mm -hmm. to self-medicate. It's like going to alcohol. So, it, so I guess the, the thing, the takeaway is being aware of your loved ones and yourself mm -hmm. to see this kind of behaviour um, and, and to know that you can cure this. It's not something that's not curable, right? And it is um, a problem of today's age in this in this 21st century. It's a real problem and that we have to be on lookout for. I just want to to touch on some experiences that I really want to share mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of cyberbullying, right? Uh, so I have been cyberbullied a lot, like a lot. <laughs> the form where I had real mental health issues of, um, that triggered my anxiety, depression, in, in one instance where I was actually hospitalized as well due to the cyberbullying um, that I had to endure. Uh, and I feel no one in this, in no one at all, no matter how much you hate a person, uh, deserves uh, to be cyberbullied. And cyberbullying effects are very, very real and very, very harmful and can cause a lot of damage, as you can see, uh, even suicide um, among among. A lot of people, not only celebrities, you see high school children and teenagers who take their own lives uh, due to that. It's real, it's really real. I actually keep a screenshot of, of a lot of um, comments online. In fact, last night I had a, a session with um, 
uh, Citra UKM with Dr. Halina Aliza Siraj and we were talking about mindfulness and um, self-reflection and some cyber troopers came on uh, politic-wise uh, giving the most horrible comments online uh, which was totally uncalled for and completely disgusting, right? Um, but because I've been through that experience, I've gone very, very down um, until, until you know, I was hospitalized once due to that cyberbullying. Uh, now I have built that resilience um, to sort of let, not let it affect me. Thankfully, I didn't hurt myself, although I almost probably did. You know, I mean, it was really hurtful. My children saw me crying. I went into an anxiety where my body was shaking. I had to take Valium actually to calm me down. And these are the effects of cyberbullying that these people think one word, they, they type that word and they don't realize the effect it has on people. So there's an issue now here that uh, people don't realize the effects of cyberbullying. Um, and when this is a norm online, because on the online environment uh, changes online, right? It's a whole environment there. And I feel that we as human beings, we are not able yet to navigate ourselves in the online environment. We have norms offline, but our norms are not totally sort of, we haven't really come to terms with online norms. And my question is, do we want these hurtful words and comments and, and bullies to be a norm online? We're living online now. So are we going to accept that as a norm? One of the things I see in Australia is there's this on, online hate prevention institute they're doing a lot of advocacy work on teaching young kids uh, to understand what is cyberbullying and not to do it. We, they don't, any any child that cyberbullies anybody, you're not going to school, you know? So they're taking it very, very seriously. Now, my question to the Malaysian public is, when you see adults bullying, they need to come in there, but they the normal type later. Dulu masa dia bergambar, tak pula nak sibuk hal politik bila dah berambus jadi warga Australia baru nak sibuk hal politik dah sah perempuan c**t that's what they say to me right um, bos zaman KRU no these are some of the comments that I have to endure um, and not only that you know they they catch out my uh, people who are close to me and it's it's horrible and you feel like how can people someone's son and father and and uh, brother you know, and I notice mostly they're males. You know, they are females, but mostly there's no research, yes. but I've noticed is um, the males, they're Malay Muslim males. And I'm wondering, you know, because I study psychology, I'm wondering how did this come about? What makes them speak these hurtful words so freely without an ounce of guilt to your own Muslim sister who's not even doing anything wrong? Might have a different, slightly different opinion than you, but. I don't think I deserve this. Nobody, nobody deserves that kind of abuse online or offline. So I understand the dynamics of online is very different, but I feel that there's so much more to be done in terms of um, creating a new norm and adapt manners, you know, of how to navigate ourselves online. I feel we're lacking in that sense. Um, my last advice, I guess, to everybody is do not. <laughs> not and when you see someone being bullied online uh, you call that person out so we do not accept we don't want to accept this because it's a mob mentality like once one person does it and because um, online your behavior amplifies whether good or bad it's a whole different world online it's very complicated we probably need a whole another topic on that right that those words are completely hurtful and and has impacted me a lot it did although because Allah janganlah di hati tisu sangat janganlah ambil apa uh, ignore. You, you, you cannot ignore sometimes. It, it affects you um, deeply. So I guess that's also one of the reasons why I totally de it because it's not worth it. It's not worth it for my mental health, it's not worth it for my kids, you know. I've got, I've got nothing to prove to anyone anyway. So yeah, effects of cyberbullying is very, very real. Uh, I don't wish it upon anyone and I hope that no one has to endure uh, hurtful words online or offline. Yeah. That is actually like kind of like the current state that we're living in, like the cancel culture that's currently happening. I mean, just most recently, you know, some some celebrities get like cancelled out for like doing or saying things from the past. Like I did remember one of the times where like Jenna Marbles, like one of the YouTubers, very very famous ones, she closed her account because of some racist term that she did seven years ago. Mm. Yes, that mm. was way behind her. 
but it did caught him again. It came up to the surface, and that kind of destroyed her career, in a way. Um, there's also like a disparity in terms of like how women and men are kind of like viewed as, because like if you're a guy celebrity, chances are they're kind of taking it a little bit lightly on you. Then mm -hmm. she actually uh, called out on everyone, like you know, I'm sorry, and like I, I won't be around anymore. Mm -hmm. Like it makes women basically stop and that's her career that's her youtube career that's a disappointing reality that we're currently facing it so i, I guess say. my question to us is mm -hmm. what do we do as as human beings where this is our our next world like this is where we spend most of our time so as as human beings now how do we deal with this how where do we go from here and how what role can we play i guess it's a question for us to think about not 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 yeah. trying to give any answers yeah. like what do we do as human beings and to teach our children uh, values um, to not cause harm onto anyone whether online or offline because they understand that uh, bullying is the same whether it's online or offline, or offline. Yeah, the problem is online yeah uh, the bullies uh, they are they feel that not they are anonymous no one knows them yeah? uh, for example, Warina, if you go uh, walking about, yeah, uh, do you see pe people coming to you and saying bad things to you? No, right? Mm. But online, they can do it because they they know that you don't know them, you don't know who they are, uh, you cannot mm. trace them back. Yeah? Uh, so they they feel invisible. I think it's good if we create awareness yeah, that online bullying is the same as offline bullying and get and we and must not tolerate it i think the message yeah. to the society is we are not going to tolerate this it is not right i think that's the message you need to push across okay. so, do you think it's way better to confront someone who bullies you online or to basically uh, mute them out or like unfollow them or block them if these people are your families yeah or friends sometimes it can be very difficult to just block or mute them Sometimes a, dis a good discussion would be good lah. Yeah, either you do the discussion or get somebody else to to help up with the discussion. But then, if uh, these individuals are yeah, anonymous person you don't know, yeah, uh, or someone who you knew but not really close to, I think uh, it's good yeah, to just um, sometimes block them or mute them because. It's not healthy for you to know whether you should or not block them. Is uh, depends on how you feel, your emotion, how you react to all these things. Yeah, if you react negatively to it, yeah, it affects your life. Yeah, it affects your functioning. Then it's not healthy for you to continue with that situation. If you follow um, advice, um, there's multiple ways that you can deal with it. So, like you said, you can block. Um, you can deactivate yourself. I guess blocking and deleting is one of the most um, uh, popular ways of dealing with um, online bullying. But in terms where the volume is so high, like what I've experienced, like every single minute, that you can't you can't even block anymore because it comes every single minute. Um, uh, so that was that was pretty hard. So I guess deactivating completely would be. Um, um, would be wise but the thing with online uh, bullying is that it stays there it's there 24 whether you block it it's still going to be there so I guess that has a psychological impact as well because when you say offline you bully when you go home you're safe but when you when there's online bullying that although you're blocking although you're deleting yourself but you know it's still there online 24 hours a day and being shared like, and sort of heal yourself eventually, you know. Um, find the strength of people who know you, who love you and who know, you know, uh, and get and seek support. I guess that's 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 one of the ways how to deal with um, online bullying. Multiples of ways, but you find what will work best for you. Yep. It really takes courage, basically, to be online and to know that whatever you do and say online will stay there forever. And the fact that these bullies are invisible makes them invincible, like, you know, makes them do everything that is, like, destructive beyond their beliefs. Like, what is your advice for, like, for, especially for the young generation? This is because this is the generation now. This is a new world we're living in. How do you, 
how do you adjust yourself to this new kind of reality? Yeah, be mindful. Eh? Be mindful mm-hmm. of how the social media affects you. Uh, limit your time on social media. Uh, engage in other activities as well that is pleasurable. Uh, don't trust easily what you read uh, or see on social media. Yeah, sometimes it's filter. Yeah? Mm. Most of the time, filter is not the real one. Okay, and then uh, like Amna said, yeah, pick what you want or read uh, or who you want to follow or subscribe. Because the more you read on this topic, yeah, uh, the more it comes out. Yeah, the, yeah, the more it comes out. Yeah, they yeah. have this algorithm. Yeah, somehow. That's a cycle, uh, what, yeah. Right? what you are interested in uh, it comes on your feet yeah? and be aware of cyberbullying it's not right uh, it is a crime actually yeah so you can report it um, and i think if you have emotional problems or psychological problems because of social media use or other things yeah it's good to get help yeah professional help sometimes you can start talking to someone yeah? uh, if it's still not resolved then it's good to get professional help counselor psychologists or even psychiatrists yeah? nowadays yeah um, there is a, still a stigma when you see uh, when you want to go to see psychiatrists yeah but then um, I think uh, mental health is something that people are talking about nowadays yeah uh, so don't be ashamed don't be afraid to uh, seek help yeah uh, because the earlier you get help, the better it is for you. How do how do you differentiate between fake news and real news? Yeah, you you Google it <laughs> outside of Instagram. You go to Google and you look for a reliable article. Do they teach that in school? Well, they teach you how to research properly so you can differentiate between reliable sources and non-reliable sources. Mm. So yeah, don't take everything you see on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Um, as fact, you need to do your own research. Mm. Um, and then Don't take memes as fact. You know, I see some people, they post yeah. memes as a fact. As fact. <laughs> mm, yeah, do your own research. If I go onto my Instagram Explore and there's stuff on it that I think is not worth my time or if it's just shallow and not really worth anything, I'll go and look up accounts that I think are beneficial and then go like all their posts so that that's what shows up on my feed. So yeah, you're in charge of what you see and you need to first identify what you want to see or the morals that you align yourself with and then work in accordance with that to ensure that the input that you're getting is beneficial yeah, and Mm. reliable. I'm so proud of you, Zan. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of her. (laughs) I just want to say be kind. I guess my... um, Yeah, I, d- I don't. I don't think I have. It. I don't know what to say right now. I'm just. A bit, I think you put it perfectly well. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what to say anymore. Um, oh, understand that um, the online environment has an impact on you, uh, whether we realize it or not. Right? I tend to use it a lot less nowadays uh, because I am not. I don't see the need to to use it as much as before. But I found a piece of mind using it less I guess I I found that Um, it's a hard world to navigate Um, lots of challenges Uh, I think as parents uh, it is our responsibility to ensure that our children don't turn out as bullies right yeah I wouldn't want my child to be writing those kind of stuff like that's that's my main goal if you share difference in opinion with someone online you have a civil conversation and you give them the facts on why you believe the things that you do and you don't do it in a derogatory way you mm. did it in like you do it in like a constructive way because everybody has the potential to grow and learn you know and everybody deserves to see all spectrums of an argument so uh, it's hard on facebook it's hard yeah. <laughs> so it's, in fact, it's, studies show that what if, if, a, if a person has a, an opinion and you try and give them facts they hold on to their previously held yeah. belief even mm-hmm. even higher so actually so, sometimes it's just worth to walk away and tell yourself it's not worth it uh, be kind um, to everybody um and this, have a lot of because of, yes last night we were talking about self-reflection self-reflect a lot those people around you who matter matter and those people or you know online sometimes are just strangers who don't matter so thank you so much for uh taking your time to be with us today thank you so much because like this is one of like the conversations that needed to have you know especially for people who actually don't know the effects 
of social media in their lives and how can it actually deeply affect how they think in general and how they live their lives. Thank you.